Live from the Mission Bay Conference Center in San Francisco, California, it's The Cube at Google Cloud Platform Live. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Frick. back here live in San Francisco for Google's Cloud Platform. It doesn't roll off the tongue. I was going to say Developer Cloud Conference, but it's the Google Cloud Platform Live. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. Join my co-host Jeff Frick here, live in San Francisco. Our next guest is CUBE alum, Erica Brescia, co-founder, CEO of Bitnami. You were on in 2010 in our inaugural class of CUBE, welcome back. Thank you, good you have to be back. You have a fan base out there. Adam <laughs> from uh, Salesforce says, oh, you're awesome. So he oh. gives you some props. Adam, if you're watching, welcome Thanks, back. Thanks, Adam, he's awesome. Yeah, so welcome back. So cloud, you know, the cloud days have been interesting, right? So, so first, pop quiz trivia. Who was the first pass layer? App Engine claims that they were first, but certainly- Heroku. Heroku, Force. So yeah. the Force and Heroku? I think so. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. We cleared that up on Twitter. So I want to get the first hard question. <laughs> so what are you up to? Tell I us what's happening. Um, so we just launched on Friday the uh, Bitnami Cloud Launchpad for GCP. So Bitnami has over 100 different apps that we make very easy to deploy locally and in the cloud. Um, we are already the top provider of apps on some other platforms, which I won't name here, but uh, we just launched on Google on Friday. I'm absolutely thrilled. You can go to google.bitnami.com or even to the Google Cloud uh, compute page and scroll down, you'll see our images there. Um, we have everything from Sugar CRM to a Rails and Node environment to WordPress to Discourse to Dream Factory. Um, a lot of cool apps you can deploy in one click directly onto GCP. So I got to get your take on this because we were speculating. It's very clear that Amazon's winning in the public cloud. They've been there for a huge amount of time. First mover, large share. But Google's doing some interesting things there. They got to win the developers, and they're clearly rolling out the goodness there. Table stakes with containers, some tooling, and then some, some new innovations that kind of integrates at the past layer. And then large scale, global enterprise stuff, interconnect, but not a lot of in between, which they're leaving for the cut in the middle. Do you see it the same way? Do you see them focusing on the developers first and these big, unique, large-scale cases or something Absolutely. else? Absolutely, that's, so that's where they started. I think they're really starting to come, I guess, downstream, you could say, to try to attract those other types of users. I mean, Amazon and Azure are kind of coming more from the bottoms up. I mean, Amazon has pretty good breadth now. It's tough to argue with that. Um, GCP came from the top and, and is working their way down. And I think partnering with companies like Bitnami, who make it easy not just for developers, but for business users and perhaps less technical people to deploy apps and run them in the cloud. I mean, there's some table stakes in there, auto scaling. Okay, yawn, okay, check. What are the, outside of the check boxes, what do you see that's innovative in the cloud that they're doing that makes it unique for developers? Is it Kubernetes? Is it some of those other things? I mean, certainly Kubernetes is very interesting and that's the direction that I think everything is going in the cloud. Um, Google has a lot of, um, I guess, appeal to developers who are looking for something fresh and new and very API driven, very flexible, and um, the other cloud platforms don't necessarily have that. I think one of the advantages they have is they are a little bit late to market, so they don't have some of kind of I don't want to call it technical debt, but um, they don't have some of the older services that have been developed that might be less flexible. They're kind of starting fresh and new, and that allows them to build a very, very performant platform, and that makes a huge difference to developers. And we've seen you know, app launch times vary by minutes sometimes on varying cloud platforms, and that makes yeah. a big difference. And you hear words like fleet of apps. I mean, just the, 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 the semantics of kind of what they're saying, implying larger scale. And then the interconnect's interesting. Kind of solves that Netflix problem, allowing companies to kind of peer through the cloud. Interesting how they're laying that out. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's tough when Amazon had so much of the market for companies to come in and try and differentiate. And um, we're starting to see a lot of that happening now. You know, it'll be interesting to see where we are in three years because everybody is innovating in different pieces, but it's all going to converge, I think, eventually. Um, but they're, they're certainly, they have an interesting take and we're happy to be a part of it. 
So Eric, you've been doing containerization of apps for a very long time, and now suddenly Docker springs on the scene and it's the hottest topic in tech, it seems like right now. Is everyone just kind of, kind of catching up with where you guys have been? Were you two out in front? Is it glad to see finally <laughs> you're getting getting some love for this, uh, this this type of approach to deployment? Yeah, so I mean, what I think is a little bit unique about Bitnami is that we can package apps to be deployed in any format. So we started before even virtualization and cloud were very popular with native installers, and we still ship native installers. So a developer can come to Bitnami and get a rail stack on their Mac laptop and then get exactly the same thing on the Google Cloud platform. And we went from installers to VMs to cloud templates, and now we're coming out with Docker support as well. For us, it's another container or another form that we can support. So we have a lot of flexibility um, that allows us to very quickly adapt and support new technologies. What's really cool about Docker, I think, is, is the level of portability that it, it promises to give. I mean, still early days, right? I mean, one right, of the things right. about Docker is everybody's using it and you can do a lot of cool things with it, but it's still, you know, a little bit on the immature side of the platform. There's a lot of development that has to still happen there. Um, but we uh, are looking forward to supporting it. Our developers already use it internally, and it will allow us to allow people to do a lot more with Bitnami apps than they could in the past. And then now we've got the new piece, right? I, how do you pronounce it? I'm going to mispronounce it, John. The it's, now you, so you can manage the fleet of containers. Kubernetes. 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 And how does that change the game? Well, that's a good question and probably a little bit above my technical <laughs> okay. level. I mean, it, it makes it a lot easier for you to deploy and orchestrate applications, but beyond that, you'd have to talk to my co-founder. Yes, well, it's interesting, because they said that, that uh, Google de deploys like 2 billion containers a day, so some crazy well, big containers number. containers are compatibility. I mean, to me, the container thing is like a rage that's just now gotten momentum with Docker, but they've been around for a while. And it's not new concept, but yeah. there's critical mass now, and so what's happened is it's become a de facto standard, as they said, it, and it really speaks to kind of what you, you're in the business for, which is making it easy to deploy for developers. So like, the idea of containers, Jeff, is just to say, okay, you run an app, all the nuances of your application don't have to be reported to every cloud platform. It's like compatibility mode, for lack of a better description. Um, but that brings up the question of ease of deployment for a developer. What have you seen change, Erica? Because that's the, that's the holy grail, right? Ease of development. I want to push button, I want service catalog if I'm an enterprise or I'm a developer. I don't want to come in and, and be a, be managing multi-vendor cloud provisioning when I'm a developer. We just had Atomic Fiction on, like, they're, they're, they're developers. They're visual guys. They don't want to be configuring networks. So what have you seen that's so compelling now that's different just a few years ago? Oh geez, well I'm hugely biased on this well, topic as you might imagine. But Well you guys do um, some great work, so you I can mean, share that. Yeah, I, I do like to think that we were kind of one of the pioneers because we started before cloud was even popular and trying to make things easy to deploy. And what we found is a lot of people like to talk about how they like to roll up their sleeves and get in and build things from scratch, but the reality is people don't have time. Even if they're capable of doing it, they have better things to do than try to put together a Rails environment. And so there are things like Bitnami and other um, packagers that kind of try to solve some of those problems for you. I mean, with the app stores that we're used to on our phone where we get one-click deployment of everything, it's kind of changing the mentality of consumers and developers alike to expect to be able to get things up and running instantly. Um, and that's the problem we're trying to solve. I'm not going to say we have it completely solved yet, yeah. but I think we're off to a pretty good start it's, in it's giving... It's still relatively early on cracking that code because it's complex. Automation, orchestration, you're seeing that in the cloud become a sticking point where you need the expertise. And certainly OpenStack has, I won't say struggled, I guess I'll say the word struggled to... I think you can to, say that. Okay, we'll say struggled. <laughs> I could say something else. Um, um, they're in Paris right now, but that's yeah. build your own mentality. And certainly there's a hacker culture out there with open compute and there's going to be some great innovation. But if you're like, you want time to value, you need to have things up and running fast. Um, so, And we've seen that. I mean, we'll drive close to 200 million hours of cloud compute usage this year, and it's because people just want to get an app or a dev environment up and running, and they don't have the patience to try and do it. And particularly, if you think about it, we're moving to new platforms at the same time as all these apps are getting updated and they're constantly new security issues. I mean, just look at what's been going on with Heartbleed and Bash and everything else. And people need a trusted source where they can just go and get stuff and click a button and it runs. And Yeah, I mean, Eric, I gotta ask you, because one of our friends in theCUBE, Steve Harrod, always comes on. Now he's a venture capitalist at General Catalyst. He was on theCUBE at VMware and he said, perimeterless IT, 
multi-cloud and mobile infrastructure are its main visions of where the action is. Yeah. Um, do you agree and what what's going on there? And give us kind of a grade of levels of comfort. A is like we're doing great, F we're failing. Cloud, um, permanent security, mm -hmm. multi-clouds, <laughs> and mobile infrastructure. I mean, it seems here mobile infrastructure looks pretty good. Yeah, I think so. I mean, we're not really focused on the mobile space, but in terms of the first two, what's been really interesting to us is to see who's using Bitnami. And we see countless, countless um, examples of people going from major banks, from major retailers, from auto manufacturers, from all kinds of governmental organizations that come to Bitnami and get apps. Um, we've had people ask us if we could build them as chairs or office furniture or something like that. Um, because they don't want their IT departments to know. So I think there, there's no option anymore. Like people are going to go to the cloud. Um, it's just so much easier for them than waiting eight weeks. People are impatient. They want their app up and running. They don't want to wait six or eight weeks for a server. You know, I feel like I, I probably sound like a, a broken record because everybody's saying this, but it really is happening. And that is yeah. definitely, definitely the way things are going. With multi-cloud, I think it's interesting. Um, it's something that people want from a comfort perspective, I think, to know that they can move between clouds. The reality is we don't see a lot of that happening yeah. yet. I think you want to know that you have portability, but are you really going to go and move your app around? Probably not, um, ex except in very special cases where maybe you're doing some big batch processing or something like that, and there's a huge cost advantage. You know, you want to do some arbitrage there or something, fine. But I don't think most people, you know, they want to deploy Alfresco or WordPress or Drupal or something and just get it up and running, and they're not going to move it unless there's a very, very compelling reason to do so. So is it more multi-cloud because you're putting specific workloads in specific clouds that are the best fit for that workload as opposed to moving the same application back and forth? That's what I see in, in most cases. Now, mind you, Bitnami focuses on people who want to deploy apps in dev environments. So we're not really suited to a healthcare company that wants to do a bunch of data crunching or something like that. I can see why they might move things between clouds. But the vast majority of people want an app or a dev environment running and they just want to deploy it and be ready to go and they're not going to move it unless they can save you know, a huge amount of money or reap some huge performance benefits. And I just don't see that happening, and particularly as you know, the, the price wars are, are Right, right, I was going to say, the, 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 uh, the, the incredible cloud economics now have got to be very tough to compete with internally if you're trying to run it in-house. Yeah, and, and if you try to build an app that's totally portable, you know, there's an investment that has to go into that to make it portable, and most people we don't see uh, being willing to do that at this point. It just does, it's not worth the trade-off. Erica, we're getting the hook here, but i got to ask you, what's it like working with Google? Take us through your deal with Google. Oh, jeez. Uh, because what, I, people want to know how to engage with Google. I mean, hell, I can't get even customer support on the website, <laughs> so, you know, on AdWords, but that's but that's a perception. You've got a, you're on the front page. I, you're yeah. doing business with Google. How do people work with Google? If it's people out there want to work with Google and share your experience in, of your deal. Oh boy, I don't know if there's a magic formula or who's watching <laughs> me right now. Um, we had Google as a company that we wanted to work with for about two years, and we actually had to wait until the platform was ready and the team was ready to work with us. So we've been pestering various folks that we know for a while, and I think it was about a year ago. And they were selective too at the time. Yeah, and and they still, I like to think they still are. Um, <laughs> we, More open we, than ever though, I mean. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, but we, we started engaging with different teams, um, first on the deal side and then on the product side. It's been a very involved process. We had a lot of folks on the Google team um, who were generous with their time, helping us to refine the product and make sure we could give the best experience possible. Um, but it does take a lot of time and effort. You know, I was heavily involved in the deal. I drove everything from our side, from contract negotiation through to launch, and um, it's it's a pretty it's a seal of it's approval. A they're, they're pretty job. finicky, right? Too well, they're not gonna just take everyone in. You got to kind of pass a bar. Right? I, I like to think so. Our team worked really hard to make sure that we could do something fantastic for their platform, and they seem to be happy with it. But um, yeah, it takes a lot of work and a lot of touch points and a lot of persistence. But, yeah, my um, observation covering them from I/O just even four years ago when they first rolled out, very tactical, selective, striking the market. They're not going too fast. They're not sitting on their heels either. They're very, very thoughtful about how they build out their strategy, and I think it's smart because a lot of companies just scramble to build out a partner program and get people to sign up without thinking about um, exactly how they might influence the business. And for Google, uh, I think they felt like we could help drive a lot of new usage on their platform, addressing that market that you talked about before, kind of in the middle. And um, 
we, I like to think, have a very good product that they're impressed with. So, Erica, thanks for coming on the Cube. Really appreciate seeing you again. Cube alumni, COO, co-founder, Bitnami, uh, here on the Cube, doing deals with Google on the front page. Again, Google is much more open than doing deals. Really rolling out to developers of some goodness here. And again, they got a lot of stuff nuanced in here from high-end, large-scale connectivity with interconnect to some new tooling. So, uh, we're covering it all here inside the Cube. We'll be right back after this short break.